Hey guys, this is Sarah, and I hope you're having a fabulous day. Um, it is beautiful here and gotten a little bit of sunshine. And so I hope you have sunshine in your weather and sunshine in your life. And today I want to talk about one of the biggest barriers I see to people healing. Okay, everybody says they want to heal from a toxic relationship. Not everyone does heal from a toxic relationship. And so what's the difference? What's the difference between the people who do heal and the people who don't? And I asked this in another group one time and they said things like money, um, being able to be no contact, whether or not you have kids with the person, uh, how bad it was, et cetera, et cetera. Everybody had their own opinion about why they thought some people healed and some people didn't. And I have, lots of data on this information. I, I know I'm like a lovey feely type person, but I also have a master's degree in research and I heart data and science because I heart transformation. Okay. Love transformation. Love making sure that the people that I'm in contact with my clients and they get transformation. Okay. So I have after talking to countless people, seeing it over and over and over again, I think there, there's a very prominent difference between the people who do heal and the people who don't heal. Can you might guess what it is? They want to. Okay? There's a lot of people who say they want to heal, but when you're in a toxic relationship, you get addicted to the crazy. You get addicted to the drama. You get addicted to the pain. You get addicted to life being bad. And so sometimes, even when somebody knows there's hope and they know there's like a hand that is reaching out to say, I've got you, I've got this, I promise there's a path and I'm going to show you the way to that path, they still don't take it. And so you're on the phone with them or you're talking to them and they're describing their lives and they're sad and they're broken and they feel worthless and they feel abandoned and they feel depressed and they feel anxious and they've lost relationships with their kids and they've lost relationships with their community and they're literally stuck in their house and they're, I mean, they, their lives are so painful, but two things are working against them. One They've lost hope that it could be any better. This feels normal to them. They think, okay, this is just how it is. Number two, they, okay, think about this. When you're in a toxic relationship, what are you really good at? Like the best in the world. People in toxic relationships, they're the best in the world at this one thing. Pretending it's not as bad as it really is. Okay. And I'm not shame. This is no shame on your end. That's like a survival technique. You have to, to like get through another day. Okay. No shame, but you spend years pretending it's not as bad as it really is. And so then it's time for healing. The toxic person's gone from your life. They've left catastrophic waves. They've left you miserable. They left you in pain, but you still have this defense mechanism in your head saying, it's not really that bad. I mean, I'm probably strong enough. I can, I can make it. I'm strong enough. I can make it. And so what I see are the very tools that kept you stuck in a toxic relationship are so often the tools that you bring with you and it's stuck in the fact that you don't heal because you still carry, I'm, I'm, not, I'm tough enough to do this and you are, but do you want to, is that really what the rest of life is going to look like? Is it going to be a feeling of abandonment, a feeling of worthlessness, feeling of pain, a feeling of loneliness, being afraid when people touch you, um, self-destructive behaviors that you don't even acknowledge. You just retail therapy, comfort food, um, zoning out in front of technology, whatever it is, coping mechanisms, okay? Because you're still trying to push down the pain. And toxic relationship survivors are dang good at pushing away that pain and pushing through life, okay? Which is... That was a technique they needed when they were in the toxic relationship. That same technique still allows the person who you're in the toxic relationship with to control you. 
until you don't move forward in healing. If you want to heal, you have to be bound and determined that that person will not win. Bound and determined you will make it work. Bound and determined that you will heal, that you will change. I know you have it in you. I know you have it in you. Because you made a relationship work for years and years and years. That was, no one could make work. You just kept banging your head against the wall. You kept trying. You kept showing up. You kept trying something different. You tried to say something different. You tried to forgive. You tried, you tried, you tried, you tried, you tried. Can you imagine if you put the effort that you made into trying to make that relationship work, into trying to make your life work, into trying to make your healing work, okay? You'd be like amazing. Like you'd have like amazing life, okay? And it is totally possible. I know it does not feel possible, but it's totally possible. I want you to take serious inventory. We talk here about getting real with your present. I do my my like responsibility to you. It's like, I'm like a mother and you're all my little babies. Okay. Even though some of you are older than me, it's okay. You're still my little babies. My job is to take care of you. Okay. And for me to take care of you, it's like a little, like a mama hen coming in and saying, Nope, come on. You've got to clean your room. You've got to eat your vegetables. You got to brush your teeth. You got to do your homework. You know, all those things that you need that, that are hard to hear sometimes. And so I want you to take a real look at your life and say, are the tools that kept me in that relationship and the tools that I needed at that time in my life still with me now? And if so, are they preventing me from healing? Because if you are still telling yourself, my, my word was it's fine. And now on my vision board, I have like a piece of paper and it says it's fine and it's crossed through. And anytime I find myself saying, oh, it's fine. It's like a huge wake up call. I go immediately and I'm like, no, that's not fine. You better do the work. You better do the work. You better figure it out. You better do the work. Okay. Because I don't want my life to be fine. It's not going to be fine. That's, that's not okay. That's not good enough. I didn't go through pain and go through hell and go through all this to have fine. Okay. I hope you say the same thing. I hope you say it's not about being fine. It's not about surviving anymore. This is my chance to thrive. And so to be able to thrive, you have to get real about those defense mechanisms that you've been using your whole life, okay, or using in the last little bit. Because I see over and over and over women and men who have every opportunity, every resource at their disposal to heal. And they don't. And it's only because they're scared to. They don't even know what it would look like on the other side. And they've got they've had years of practicing this denial, practicing being strong enough, practicing the wrong things. Okay. So I hope you have a wonderful day. If you have any questions, you can message me or reach out to me. I love you all. I think about you all the time. I I just am so proud of you. This truly is like the best Facebook group ever. Every once in a while I'll go to some other groups and they're just I'm just like, why does no one delete their comments? They're so mean to each other. They're so awful. Okay. And I am so thankful for you. I'm so thankful for our community here. And I'm so thankful that hopefully you will watch this video and get serious about what's going on in your life and your ability to heal. Mwah. Happy healing. Love ya.